No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. Educational experiences are fast becoming some of the most compelling applications of VR. The subject of history, in particular, has already seen a few different approaches. There have been VR documentaries, From Ashes brought the lecture format to life, and more than one time travel experience allows students to be transported to historic locations. Apollo 11 differs from these other educational experiences as it focuses on one particular historic event, the moon landings. Using speeches, interviews and real audio from the mission, you experience moments from launch day, June 16, 1969. The full experience is set to take students through the entire mission, giving a much richer understanding of both the small details of what it might have been like to be there, as well as the wider historical context of the event. The Apollo 11 experience was created by Immersive VR Education, which is a new studio set up by David Whelan, the editor of Virtual Reality Reviewer. Titans of Space creator Drash has also been working on the project. His hand is clearly visible from the start, as the demo includes some useful features we've come to expect from him, such as a button to toggle IR camera bounds. What follows are my impressions of a demo build of the experience. I have not been personally involved in any of its creation, and while I always strive to be honest in my opinions, please do be aware that I work very closely with David on Virtual Reality Reviewer. I am also further biased by the fact that I am a massive space geek. After some brief snippets of text which put the space race in its proper context as part of the Cold War, we open with President Kennedy's immortal 1962 We Choose to Go to the Moon speech. We watch this from a sofa in a small room, much like the one from Welcome to Oculus, but adorned with NASA imagery. I think this could provide more educational value if it were designed as a 1960s living room, although the TV set would have to be a heck of a lot smaller than the anachronistic 60 inch flat screen that we see here. Five years ago, fly the Atlantic. Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. The eventual transition from that living room to the lunar orbit is sublime. The soundtrack matches the beats of Kennedy's speech powerfully, and the visual of the Earth rising over the moon as the command module floats past you is inspirational. Other standout moments are the interview with Buzz Aldrin about launch day, as you descend to the base of the Saturn V rocket on Merritt Island. You get a great sense of scale and of place, and together the scene really helps you relate to Aldrin's words. Friends here were being put into the spacecraft to uh, stand alone by myself uh, out there and, and look at the rocket and the quietness and see the sun come up and the waves rolling in and the evidence of the millions of people uh, watching but, but nothing specific and just so quiet and to realize that indeed uh, such a contrast was going to take place, all the frantic activity preparing the rocket but it was so quiet up there for me personally and that in a very few moments uh, we were going to be uh, departing in a, in a great roar and offer a momentous uh, event. The moment where you leave Earth's gravity is another highlight. It is handled simply and elegantly, but is very effective. What doesn't work quite so well is the launch countdown segment. While it's great to get an appreciation of the space and view from the cockpit, the sequence lasts quite a while without much to look at. The soundtrack does help you keep in the right frame of mind, as it does throughout, but I can imagine some people growing restless. Some animation on the astronauts would significantly improve this section. When we do finally take off, of course, the lack of any G-force pushing you into your chair is a noticeable immersion breaker, but there's not much that can be done about that. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. There is no denying that Apollo 11 is still very much a work in progress. It still needs at least to add the lunar landing itself and the return voyage to feel complete. There are also improvements to be made to the existing segments. Some textures are missing or could be enhanced, and adding more animations would certainly have a big impact on immersion. 
If you're not naturally interested by the subject matter, then it could be considered a little slow at times, but on the whole, it is very well composed. There are numerous examples of very smart direction for VR. The opening sequence is a good example of layering on different points of focus, and the way your eyes are drawn to the top of the rocket once you reach the foot of the launch pad is very effective. The sound, both in terms of stirring music selection and the use of authentic audio clips, is a great success and holds the experience together even in the slower moments. Overall, Apollo 11 is a great example of how VR can bring an historical event to life and point at an interesting new avenue for educational experiences. We're through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. 11 Houston, uh, your guidance has converged. You're looking good. I'm looking forward to when the final product lands. There is a link to the Kickstarter in the video description below, and the demo is publicly available today. Stand by for Mode 1, Charlie. Mark, Mode 1, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. Mr. Houston, you are go for staging. Sky is not. Budget top. Inboard cutoff. Inboard engines out. I'm in board cutoff. Houston, be advised, the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Yeah, he finally gave me a window to look out.